welcome to today's video. If you haven't noticed behind us so far, that is the live cam at the Lowai Beach uh, Resort, I think. One of you mentioned that they went ahead and found out where the live cams are on Kauai and shared that with me. Um, if you are new coming to this video and our channel, and especially if you have come to this video for Hawaii content, you found the right video on the right channel because I personally have a very big passion for Hawaii, which has bled into him having one. <laughs> Because <laughs> I convinced him to go quite often. Oh, I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, you it's are. Island time. Island time. That's it. So today, what I thought I would do in preparation for us to go to Kauai. It's not our first time going to Kauai. It's not our first time going to Hawaii. We've been to all the islands. Check out the other Hawaii videos. Yes. Sure she'll put a little thing up there. There's a million playlists for every single island um, and Hawaii in general. So we wanted to kind of bring to you kind of our tips and tricks in a bunch of different categories on things that have helped us over the years that would have been really beneficial to know like during even our first trip. We started going when you were pregnant with yes, Ashley. Ashley. And she's about to turn 11. And our oldest was so eight. They, yeah. And eight now years she's apart. 18. So we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. And we've learned a lot. Um, yeah. And you know, got some more tips. And a lot of people ask us questions about this kind of stuff. And so sometimes it's helpful to just have it all in one video and I can just direct people to this video going forward. And so we just wanted to do that. Was eight. So they, yeah. And They're now eight she's apart. 18. So we've been doing this for a while. Yeah. And we've learned a lot. Um, yeah. And you know, got some more tips. And a lot of people ask us questions about this kind of stuff. And so sometimes it's helpful to just have it all in one video and I can just direct people to this video going forward. And so we just wanted to do that. Let me just kind of give you a layout of what our categories are and then we'll start going through them one by one. And they're not really in any order. There, there's no priority of one over the other. But the first category will be um, food and food budgets. The second one is excursions and activities while you're on the islands. Um, the third category is car rentals. The fourth is snorkeling. And the fifth one is just other tips and tricks. And this is pretty basic across any island. Um, some things are universal. very specific to a certain island. Island, but for the most part, it's pretty general across all of the islands. And, and YouTube's all yeah. about community, so is Hawaii about community. So right. share your thoughts and ideas because there are little little nuances, uh, nuances and... to each island, little things, and in your own experience. So put all your comments and help yeah. other people in the comments below. And it might be something we haven't learned ourselves, yeah. even in the times that we've gone. But more info is always better, so usually. Uh, and to give you some context for what where these tips have come from, we have four daughters, and we have traveled with them on every trip to Hawaii except for two. We are starting to travel alone, just the two of us, which is fantastic. <laughs> Um, so we are coming at it with the coming idea of babies up to teenagers. Yeah, also, so it's just the traveling with families and having kids traveling with you. And also the same tips kind of apply for when you're traveling alone with a spouse, loved one, family, friends, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the basis for where we're coming from. So we'll it. jump right into the first one, which is food budget. Um, I could talk about food budget for a long time, but I will just give you the basic kind of idea of what we have discovered over time. The first thing is people always ask me, how do I count for my food budget? How do I know how much I need to save up for in order to like have enough to spend when, when I'm there? Um, and my first tip is when you're thinking about food for a family or even just the two of you, if you have a place that you're renting when you go to Hawaii that has even a kitchenette up to a kitchen, a full-size kitchen, eat in your hotel, at least for breakfast, snacks, and have the food available to take with you to the beach. That is the minimum that we buy when we go to Hawaii. And then we also buy a few meals to eat at night. That is the basic. We used to only eat in our hotel rooms when the kids were little, which we'll talk about. But that's the basic of what we eat. Because it adds up. Yeah, Hawaii especially breakfast. Expensive. Breakfast is really expensive yeah. if you think about it. And we have four kids, and so it can add up really, really quick. Mm -hmm. But my idea with that um, and keeping that idea in mind, that budget to feed your family is less likely pretty much the same if you were back at home. So I only account for food in that regard and I pull that money from my weekly budget from home life. Like not, I don't save up for that in terms of a trip to Hawaii. I pull that from my home budget and what I would normally spend going to Costco or the grocery store and what I buy for the kids to eat for the week. So fruits, veggies, drinks. The usual. The then usual. You, then of course you're gonna wanna eat out. You're gonna do stuff. Right. Shave so ice. you kind of add up how many times do you wanna eat out? How many 
dinners do you want to eat out and you know for our family we can eat out at a basic restaurant for like a hundred bucks so we just kind of account for how many times we want to eat out and then we also account for how many shave ice certain people like to eat and not tell their wife how many times they eat um shave ice aren't cheap they're like and you don't always have to tell your wife how much you eat so it's fine <laughs> yeah just you can just all. put it on the credit card and let her find out a month later but those are the kinds of things that you want to kind of plan for and save up for in terms of food in terms of where to buy your groceries costco is my number one if you have more than two of you it's just the easiest one uh, we can go through a whole pallet of pog drinks in the can um, we can also go through the whole gallon of pog juice so getting it at costco is the best savings um, the prices are, are almost close to what they would be here in the states just because it's costco depends on the items but... depends on the items but it's it's pretty close and we've been enough times to like and i know the prices here and so i can i can judge it pretty quickly the grocery stores are not the same you're gonna pay eight bucks five to eight bucks a gallon for milk so we tell our kids you don't get to drink milk <laughs> <laughs> you can have juice um, and that kind of thing. So uh, prices at the grocery stores are higher. Um, and in that regard, I kind of have to pull a little bit from my Hawaii budget in order to be able to afford to buy the groceries at the prices Hawaii has to you know, charge for them. I think that's kind of it for food. Do you have any other? The other thing we do is we say, if you have a Costco membership, yes. is you save your Costco rebate and you save that money and then you can apply it to help pay for your trip. So that's one of our little payment trips. Yeah, I guess I have done enough videos on like how to make Hawaii affordable. And that is my number one tip if you have a Costco membership um, don't spend that rebate back at home save it for when you get to go on a vacation because it feels like you're spending free money number one because you are and two it's a great savings account where you don't have access to it until that time when your membership is renewed so yeah. that is where a lot of our budget comes from in terms of spending money is our our Costco rebate so thanks for that tip yeah, and now we're moving on to excursion yeah, number two excursion and activities yes our kids discovered probably on Kauai what ATV tours and snorkel tours they finally read the little um, signs outside <laughs> well they're so the kids are not older they didn't when know we what were they going, were when they were younger we didn't have the budget to do very many excursions and they were too Plus young the kids were too young definitely yeah. check the like weight requirements requirement height requirement yeah. for some of the activities you don't get there only to realize that the kids can't do it two of your kids can't yeah. go so then you're you know one of you has to stay behind with those kids and that's so just check that stuff out yeah. be aware of that the other thing too i guess we're talking about beaches you know just investigate your beaches depending on your kids uh age level um it, and they're really good about marking and the maps and yeah. kid friendly surf so even if you there, are on an excursion there are some beaches with uh, you know riptides and some different things so just yeah. investigate your beaches as you Go. but again Hawaii is super good about that you can find information and they even have signs while you're there you can talk with the locals you know ask them what are the best beach for kids stuff like that they're of course they know yeah we are not huge like snorkel snorkel people um you know I don't like to dive down and I grew up in Alaska where water is death so <laughs> well you know there are people out there that you guys that are big snorkelers and stuff and so investigate the uh the reefs and the different places to go for really really uh you know specialized snorkeling or diving but yeah. So in terms of actual excursions that you're wanting to book and reserve ahead of time or even once you get there you see something and I want you want to do that I'm just gonna tell you right now it's very tempting one you need to reserve those things ahead of time yeah. um, travel has gotten different in Hawaii you do need to plan for those ahead of time or at least research um, and see if they have booked up and then maybe you can kind of wait and get your an idea if you want to do it later you're going to be very tempted you're gonna see signs for timeshare discount unless you are seeking out a timeshare and you want to move into that world of owning a timeshare for Hawaii or anywhere over the around the world those two hour timeshare meetings in order to get the discount we have done that one time and we re regret we're it we're never gonna do it again we'll never do it again oh, we wasted the two of and I please. the two of us wasted an entire day it took us five hours and that was fighting with them on saying no they wouldn't physically let us leave like well they just they take you to the next person to talk to right. and then you got to move over here and it's just a waste of time I would rather pay the $300 we saved and have a whole day back and we've said and that, on that so it's like screw it I'm not gonna we've said that on every excursion that we've done since yeah we know how much we probably could save by doing the timeshare and getting that discount but we will never do that again <laughs> that's up to you guys yeah. but it's not worth a day wasted in Hawaii okay so moving on to the third Third category, which is car rentals. Oh no, we're gonna talk about hikes and trails. So oh, okay. I think about too the uh, the beautiful places to hike. It's amazing. Yeah. But investigate the hikes ahead of time. There are when we've been in the past, you didn't have to register, or uh, but they've now limited some of the access. Mm -hmm. So check your hikes ahead of 
time. The other thing is the islands, and I've hiked on every single one of them so far, any sort of rain can get very muddy. Yeah, um, and, and change the landscape 100%. Yeah, so if you have kids, you have whatever, just, just check out your skill level. Um, I bring shoes that I'm gonna basically hike in and then probably throw away at the end of the trip because um, it can get muddy. And I do mm -hmm. I do hikes that are, you know, I like hikes, I do yeah. a lot of big hikes, uh, maybe more technical and stuff. Uh, but investigate the hikes, especially if you're gonna be taking smaller kids or people that aren't as into the hiking. Yeah. Uh, just investigate the trails ahead of time uh, is my tip on that. Um, but also like on Kauai, in like half the island, you're gonna be in red sand and red rock. So if you have white shoes, like I've told my girls, you're not bringing any of yeah. your white Nikes. Like they're just, it's not gonna happen. Or even their white Hoka's. I'm not letting them bring no, those. anything white mesh like that's gonna get ruined if you're going yeah. to the Canada or the beach. Or and if you have a pair that you don't mind if it gets ruined and you wanna donate it or throw it away when you, before you leave, then that's the pair you need to bring. Otherwise, some hikes are low level and you could just wear a pair of like Chacos or Keen sandals. Just investigate ahead of time. Yeah. On them. Know ahead of time what your skill level is, your kid's skill level, take tons of water, more water than you think. Yeah. There's no like water refill stations on any hike that I've ever seen. Yeah on any of the islands. And the humidity yeah. will dehydrate you faster and stuff. You'll just sweat a lot more, so. Yeah. Okay. Next up, car rentals. We would say, probably without a doubt, that there's only one island you probably don't need a car rental for, and that Oahu, correct? Oh, oh if you're staying downtown yeah. Waikiki? Yeah, but only if you're staying in Waikiki, in Honolulu, and you're close enough to the main strip in Honolulu. Our friends are going, and she was asking me, she's like, I don't have a car rental booked yet. Do you think I need one? And I said, are you leaving Waikiki Beach? Are you leaving your hotel? Are you leaving that general area? And she said, no, my kids hate being in the car. My kids don't want to do the excursions or the outside adventures where so, yeah the main drag there it's nice and long awesome storage you can walk the whole thing there's a the trolley. trolley yeah so easy if ubers if you were to kind of go up a couple streets yeah. you could uber up to those streets but there's a path walkway the whole yeah. way you go through the mall i mean so if you're staying in waikiki proper there yeah you probably don't need Fine. a car if you're staying in princeville on Kauai, maybe you could just stay in princeville and not need a car but it would be a really expensive uber to get up to princeville and back to the airport. So car rentals in general on all the islands, I would say you just suck it up and you get the car um, and you pay the price. When it comes to the price, keep checking it because most car rent reservations have a free cancellation leading up to like 24 hours before your trip. And you can cancel that if you find a cheaper price. I think the last time we went, I changed our reservation four times because the price kept going down in the last two weeks before we left on va our vacation. I saved hundreds. Right now our car rent that we just rebooked it was double what we initially paid so we didn't want to touch well, we that paid one. and then it went up so right we're keeping it but. yeah so we're keeping it we just added a day so uh car rentals the other thing is yeah. when you get to the airport especially where were we last um well Oh, uh, yeah, we were on Oahu. The, the line. The line at the car rental place is can be insane. 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 In Oahu last time, I think it took us like two, two hours, hours to go through. They literally had like three people doing all the counters mm -hmm. and the line was out the door. So what you might want to do is send someone up to get the car. And the second your flight lands. To go and get, get your all your bags. Because otherwise you're going to be caught in a big old rush going up to the car rental along with everybody. Yeah. And apparently they do not staff properly. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just be aware of that. Um, I'm sure you'll listen to this, you'll go do it, and there'll be like no line. If there is a line, you're gonna get screwed, and yeah. it'll, it'll take hours, so that's all Oahu was the worst one we had had. It was the, like, yeah. they did not staff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that's one tip. One tip. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that is it for car rentals. Oh, there's also, you can prepay the gas. Oh, yeah. Gas is really expensive. And on most of the islands, depending on how much you're traveling, you're not going to use a whole lot. Like, you might use one tank and then a little bit of a fill up. Do the whole prepay gas because you get you pay less. Again, kind of run the numbers yourself, but... Um, we usually go through a tank of gas we, we in the time we're there. We drive a lot, but yeah. I still, I prepay because they give a better rate. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's cheaper. You just come back you can bring it empty and um, I've brought it where it just turns to the red right as we're pulling in sweet mm -hmm. I love doing that because then I feel like I won um also with your with your rental car it's obvious that they're rental cars because <laughs> they're a little bit newer um and locals know where you leave your cars on trails on yeah, yeah, yeah. like spots in downtown in like the little you know shopping areas and that kind of the thing so ops. do not leave valuables in your car ever like no. just don't do it don't leave your suitcases the only place I've ever left our suitcases in the car was at Costco 
Um, cause well, that's because we're coming you don't have an, <laughs> have an and option. There's so many people all the time. That's not bad. Right. But any other time. Head, beach, place, anything. Um, huge horror stories. Do not leave valuables in your car. Like, um, don't hide it. Don't stick it under the seat. Because yeah. you'll you'll get the car broken into and you'll have your wallet stolen. Like, yeah. if, you know, so just, whether it's yeah. obvious or not, just Make don't it do look it. look like it's totally empty. So. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the next category is snorkeling. We kind of touched on that a little bit. A little bit. Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, snorkeling can be really like intimidating. I have and still kind of have a claustrophobia with snorkeling and going underwater, which is why I don't like to go down deep. But I found a love of snorkeling with the acceptance of I just like to surface level snork snorkel and I go to areas that have coral close to the water's edge and I that's all I want to do. Um, but it's very possible to snorkel in Hawaii if you are a beginner snorkeler. Go in public areas where there's lots of people nearby you, maybe even tell, like I've had plenty of people tell me, hey, I'm a new snorkeler, can you kind of keep an eye on me? Or do you have any tips and tricks to, like I see you snorkeling, what do you suggest I do? And I've actually helped people out, so don't you know worry about like talking to people around you to let them know I'm kind of concerned about this, can you keep an eye on me? Because we're having make sure that the person you're with knows. And obviously if you're doing real snorkeling and going down, you yeah. need like the traditional mask and stuff. But right. if you're not a big water person um, and you can't, you don't like those whole things in your mouth and stuff, you can get the Triboard yeah. uh, full face mask thing. They work great. Um, there's a few knockoff brands. Just it's there's worth a billion paying for the brands. quality. If it's mega cheap, it's for a reason. Um, and they'll break and they'll work. Well, so. and snorkel tours are starting to not let you wear those on their snorkel tour. I have had one person tell me, you know, that's not recommended. And I've told them this is the official, the first official like snorkel mask. This isn't a knockoff brand. I trust it. And they just they left it uh, as an option well, for myself. The other thing too, with those full face masks, you, you can't, can't pressurize. Yeah. So if you go down, it just gets more and more pressure. So you can't equalize the pressure. And that's the danger so, of them. Yeah. I but mean, I, I most surface... people are just putting around the top. I yeah. mean, that's what I've done. So anyways, those are some tools there. Plus you can get on the forums, get on mm -hmm. the, you know, you know more about the Facebook forums and stuff. Yeah. Well, the, you can get on the snorkel report um, websites. If you're renting your gear and not taking it with you, like in uh, Maui, they have the snorkel store or what is that? Snorkel Bob. Um, you can ask them for the snorkel report link and they will text it to you so you can actually access the you know the website to find out what areas are good for snorkeling and what ones are not um, that's also the same for like weather um, well the other thing is getting your gear um, you can rent gear you can bring it from mm -hmm. home yeah. and if you get on the forums you can keep out on like people are leaving and they're like hey we have these mm -hmm. boogie boards we have this stuff we can't fly with it who wants it and you can meet up with them and get it yeah. at least twice we've had people leaving the hotel and be Full like, sets of snorkel. In fact, two of our full sets yeah, we got came from, from people. that. Because um, people go buy it at Costco and then they can't take it home. So then they just either dump it in their hotel room or they're like, hey, you mm -hmm. know. So, so I will, that one links back to food that I should have mentioned for food, but it kind of goes into both categories. On Facebook, it's worth, if you don't have a Facebook account, it actually is worth going on just for forums for the island you're going to because they have great ideas. But one of them is the Pass It Along Hawaii group, and that's for food or gear. People who are leaving the island and they have all their food left over and their, their gear left over, they offer it up. You cannot ask for gear. You cannot say, I need a boogie board for my trip next week. But if you have extra of either one of those categories, you offer it up, post a picture. So you can watch for those forums as you're getting ready to go on your trip or even while you're there and then jump on those and go and get those gear um, or food items from that person's hotel or wherever they choose to like leave it. And it cuts down yeah. on the trash. I mean, they are an island and all this yeah. kind of stuff gets brought to them. I'm sure my comment about leaving my tennis shoes probably doesn't go over well, but we want to try to cut down the trash. That's but sometimes we actually can donate those. Like we'll wash them and we can donate to like a Goodwill. Yeah. All right. So last up is just um, ideas in general for that really didn't fit into a specific category. My kids, when we're traveling and going on excursions or going like on Maui, when we went to the road to Hana, I made sure that they each had their own individual little stuff sack and they had all of their things in their own bags, um, their sunglasses, their towel, a few snacks for themselves, and their water bottle. And then every single time we got out of that car or got into the car, they had their own bag and they're in charge of their own bag. And that way things come in and out of the car. Um, and that was really helpful when we started doing that way so that I'm not bogged down with every single bag for every single person, but it also gets it out of the car. So takes... the teenagers can bring what they want. And, right. You know, more and they're not having to stuff. ask mom for their stuff. Yeah. Um, take water everywhere you go. Um, have water in the car with you. Take water 
Heck, take water to the car rental place because we were there for two hours and we ran out of water. Okay, so if you have little kids, and even our youngest can be a picky eater when we eat out, have them eat in your unit before you go out to eat and have them eat the things that they like to eat so that when we go, like we do this, and we, when we go to the restaurant, we know that that kid has had a full meal. So then if they want to nibble on our fries and have a uh, pina colada, like a, obviously a virgin one, then that's fine because they have eaten a full meal and they can have like an appetite when we go out. Well, not only does that save you money on food that might go wasted if they don't eat it in the restaurant, but also um, it saves you, you know, we, uh, the hassle. If all they're eating is mac and cheese, we literally went to TA, TGF Fridays, one of uh -huh. these chains. It was craft mac and cheese out of the little blue box. It actually had the label it on the menu. Like it was, and it was nothing like a, special. It cost like 12 bucks or yeah. something. And it was absurd. When it comes to beaches, the only safe sunscreen is reef safe sunscreen. Um, I don't know the exact name. I can't say the two names of the ingredients you cannot have in sunscreen, but you need to have reef safe sunscreen. It cannot be reef friendly. friendly. Yeah, it's a nice marketing um, Watch clinic. for those. Our favorite one is the Blue Lizard and Sunbum. Those are the two brands. Hawaii is no longer selling products that are not reef safe. So, so we you can get them there. Yeah, but we so tend to use to ones that are maybe a spray sunscreen for the pool, but then we rinse off um, and usually we aren't combining the day. But if we go into the ocean, we're having reef safe sunscreen. Also in terms of the ocean and the beaches, turtles. I, you cannot go near them. You cannot be more than, or closer than 10 feet away from them. Same with any wildlife. Come any wildlife, up, seals, mock seals. on the beach and I didn't even see it, but somebody was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, what? And there was a, a seal just laying there. Yeah. So you cannot approach any of the, like, it's, it's serious. Like if they catch you it's messing like with things, they will find $1, you. $1,000 yeah, fine. It's, it's it, no joke. They, you can get in yeah. hefty fines and stuff. Yeah. So I was um, on, we were at Black Rock last year in Maui and I saw a whole horde of people right at the water's edge and I realized that the person that was closest to whatever they were looking at was like it wasn't even a foot away from where the turtle was and I about lost my nuggets my kids have never really like seen me like angry in public before I lost my I threw off my snorkel mask and I just dove closer to those people and I was like get away from the turtles. There was like two turtles and they were literally, I mean, they were touching this turtle and I was so mad at them. I'm like, this is not okay. You She's cannot be close. I, they were being Karens by touching the turtle that's illegal. I know, I know. You're in the water. I've turned around before and they're like swimming at you and I've been swimming yeah, backwards. You, it's and that's different. cool. Yeah. It's just you are not to approach wildlife. No. You're not to harass them, not to impede their their motion. Right. Um, they're, they're beautiful. You'll get close enough, don't worry. Uh, but just be aware of that because if somebody with authority does bust you and they do have people that'll go out and mark off an area so a seal mm -hmm. or a turtle can just chill. Yeah. Uh, those people, I think they report you and stuff. I've just heard about people getting big fines. Big fines. Um, and things like that. So just be careful of that. Um, like I said, you get plenty close. I almost ran over one without realizing it looked like a rock. Yeah. But um, anyways, one little tip there. Uh, I think in general, respect locals, it, you know, mm -hmm people that who live there whether they're there's you know a debate on what makes you a local but it's they live there and a lot of people live close to where you're sightseeing um so just respect them and their and their space um and their time uh and also like more so i would say on maui if you're visiting maui right now don't ask them about the fires everything i have read online do not ask them about the fires do not ask them how they're doing in terms of the fires you can just ask how they're doing today or how can i help today um, um, because they just don't want to talk about it and if they will talk about it they'll bring it to the table so just be sensitive they have not come back yet they have not bounced back yet so there's a lot of sensitivity um, in regards to the fires it's gonna and take a while. it's gonna take a long time so also on Maui respect that like you're not going to get the same experience that you got a year a year ago like we went to Maui a year ago and we wouldn't get the same experience with Lahaina being gone respect that and there's nothing that anyone can do about that so you just have to work around that but that does hold true for all the islands it's you know a kind of a special place um, which is why we love going there so much but also like we have to respect it at the and same it's time. a double-edged sword for the locals because i mean i remember jackson hole where people are complaining about all the people that come in in the summer but it's their livelihood and, i mean it's yeah that's what happens with tourist spots alaska it's all tourism so you have to live with it a little bit so just just be mindful of it yeah. park where you're supposed to park uh you know you're on the beach that's cool but watch you know don't be going through people's yards and stuff 
Yeah. So, um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Hawaii is beautiful. You'll yeah. love it. Uh, save up, plan for it, make your dream happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my only thing, I'm not a huge fan of Big Island, but research your islands ahead of yeah. time. Research what you want to do, but you'll love Hawaii. You'll love the Hawaiian people and, you know, enjoy your trip. Yeah. Have fun. We are headed to Kauai soon. We need to make a detour to Japan first, <laughs> just in case you are following us in general or want to follow us to Kauai next. Um, we will be going there, but we're going to go to Japan first. My wife can't um, go anywhere unless it kind of <laughs> to Japan somehow. I or saved you a lot of Hawaii. money on your return flight so from Japan. Yeah. I know, I know. It's, cool. it's girl math, people. It's girl math. Stick around and you'll find us in Kauai very, very soon. And if you have any extra tip for us or those who are watching and reading the comments below, you can leave your ideas down below. Yeah, if you have please. any questions that we have not answered here or it, within other videos, leave your questions down below because I will talk about this any day. And if you have personal questions about Hawaii, find me on Instagram. Again, under Dana Creates because DM me. I will talk to you all things about all Hawaii. All day. All day. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> Take care. Subscribe, click the little notification yeah. button, and thanks. Bye, guys. Thank you. Hey, where have you been? I've been looking for you now and then. Someone just like you who can make me feel the way you do. Cause if I'm the ocean, you're the rain We only need each other, baby, you know we're the same Let's run, run away All I need is you, now and always You and me, you and me We don't need no one else than each other You and me and me We could run, run